pleased to be able to speak today on the appropriation bill. This is the budget, this is the bill that the government seeks approval to uh, withdraw the money that will pay for our public service, for our schools, for our hospitals, for our police, for everything that the government does over the coming year. Uh, it provides an enormous level of detail around some of those initiatives. It provides very scant detail in others, but such is the way of things. We have the budget papers to consider. The opposition will, of course, support the appropriation bill. Uh, it would be madness for any opposition ever not to. Uh, it is necessary to enable services uh, to continue uh, for the people of South Australia. We take this opportunity uh, to reflect uh, on some of the matters contained within the budget, uh, some of the information contained in the budget and what it says about the government's stewardship of our tax dollars, uh, of indeed the public money and the public's trust in the government as to how they are spending that money. Uh, today I'm going to make some general reflections. I'm going to talk specifically about some of the things that people in my electorate of Morialta uh, would have been very eager to see in this budget but were disappointed to miss out on. Uh, and then I'm going to spend the bulk of my time reflecting on one particular area uh, within my portfolio, that of uh, the uh, government's response uh, to the Royal Commission into Early Childhood Education and Care. Uh, I for, for the Deputy Speaker's benefit, um, there are budget lines specifically relevant uh, to that response uh, that I can provide the Deputy Speaker with if needed. This is a budget, the Labor Party's second budget since coming to government, that I think belies the unrealistic optimism uh, that the first budget contained, uh, and I think its major measures are in many ways uh, a, a optimistic, to say the least, uh, certainly uh, present spin uh, and lack of substance to the South Australian people. Last year, the Labor Party came to government and immediately presented a budget where they said this year we were going to have uh, a surplus of more than $200 million. They applied an efficiency dividend to every government department with the exception of some frontline agencies and they said that all of those agencies would deliver on those efficiencies uh, and that was how Labor was going to pay for uh, its significant spending promises, uh, its election promises, some of them worthy, uh, some of them pet political projects uh, built around electoral cycles and marginal seats. The fact that every, almost every single department in government failed to meet its budget in the last 12 months is a sign of reckless mismanagement. It's a sign of negligence. It's a sign uh, that there is no discipline in this government at all. Because, of course, sir, when you have almost every department, except for the electoral commissioner, who saved a million dollars, uh, and except for TAFE SA, uh, who, of course, have benefited in the last couple of budgets from a resetting uh, of their expected revenue and indeed the cuts that have been imposed on them uh, by Tom Coots and Tonus, the, the, the member for West Torrens, when he was the treasurer in 2017. Except for those two departments, every other department blew its budget. Now, the challenge for a government when it has $1.3 billion worth of overspend within its departments is to say, well, uh, are we going to do better next year? Are we somehow going to uh, reimpose some discipline on our departments? Is there some central guidance that can be given to agencies to assist them in meeting their savings target? Because we're talking about taxpayers' money, taxpayers' hard-earned money, and every dollar that these governments fail to meet their budget by are dollars that have to be taken out of the pockets of hard-working South Australians, residents, small businesses, taxpayers. It's not a small thing. But no, this government's response to those, that overspend of $1.3 billion, that deficit of more than $200 million that they have turned this budget into, this government's response was to indeed uh, provide that funding going forward, to bake those overspends into the forward estimates, uh, as has been described by some. There are still some cuts to come uh, as a result of the efficiency dividend applied last year. And so even the surplus next year of another $200 million or so that the government now says is going to be delivered, that is predicated on them actually achieving those efficiency dividends that were put in the budget last year in, in future years. But why would anyone believe those departments will achieve those efficiencies when they failed to in their first year? And indeed, those uh, 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 failures to deliver on those efficiencies have been forgiven by this Treasurer. 
I think it's a sign of poor management. I think it's a sign of negligence, uh, fiscal negligence. And I think it's a sign of a government uh, that is unlikely ever to achieve a surplus for the people of South Australia. Because bear in mind, there are two major expenses for which the government has said uh, there is provision in the Treasury. Uh, they are identified on page six of budget statement number three uh, as existing but no sums are identified. We're talking about uh, the preschool uh, reforms, uh, three-year-old preschool, which I'll come to later, and the skills agreement, both of which are waiting on detail to be provided by, in one case, a Royal Commission, and in another case, a national agreement. And when those agreements come, the government has had a guess at how much that'll cost and put that into the budget. So that's fine. Uh, that happens. There's a third major expense coming in terms of the university merger, where the government has said they'll provide substantial funds, haven't said how much, and the Treasurer said today uh, they haven't identified it in the budget. So that's a further cost to come out. But even the skills agreement and the preschool agreement, they are going to have significant and growing costs in the years to come. Uh, Commissioner Gillard says that by 2029, we're talking about $200 million a year extra going into our early childhood education budget, and that is not the money that is in the Ford estimates. It's a much smaller amount in the next four years. So we don't have much faith in the budget papers uh, presenting a true and accurate reflection uh, of what our future budget condition is in South Australia. It's a typical Labor budget where they spend the money and then when they are turfed out, they expect the Liberal Party to fix the economy.